Hi Year 6 and welcome to week 4 of your English. This week we're going to be looking at the layers of the rainforest and you're going to be writing an explanation report. So let's get started. First of all we're going to watch a couple of videos just to give you an understanding of the structure of the rainforest and that's the subject you're going to be writing about this week. So you need a bit of an overview to get started off and then you'll have a better understanding of what you're going to be writing about. You might want to get a pen and paper, you might want to jot a few ideas down as you watch or you can just enjoy. Several different systems contribute to the health of the rainforest and they all depend on one another. To understand how they work, it's best to imagine the rainforest as a number of layers, starting with the ground layer and ending with the top layer or canopy. The ground layer consists of the soil and all the material lying on top of it. This includes many fallen trees, whose exposed roots reveal a lot about the underlying earth. You'd have thought with all this lush vegetation around us, you'd have a really rich soil. But this tree's roots tell us a different story. They grow out sideways, but hardly down at all. That's because the soil here is really very poor. What little nutrients there are are only held in the top few centimetres. This is due to the way in which the forest recycles its nutrients. All the dead material lying on the ground is swiftly broken down by insects and fungi to form a thin layer of topsoil. But the process doesn't stop there. The nutrients are quickly soaked up by the surrounding trees which means they never have a chance to penetrate any deeper into the ground. As a result, the subsoil is pretty infertile. This process is so fast at recycling material that, unlike most other parts of the world, nearly all of the nutrients in the rainforest are held in the trees rather than the soil. The next layer up is mainly populated with shrubs and young saplings. This part of the forest is usually quite dark because it lies in the shadow of the trees above. But every so often a tree comes crashing down, opening up a gap above. Light comes streaming in to stimulate growth. And that's not all that happens. The growth spurt is the beginning of a huge fight between different plants to see which one can make best use of the conditions. The competition for growth is so fierce that only one seed in 10 million will produce a tree that reaches the canopy. And the battle is being fought out by an incredible number of combatants. Walking through the rainforest, it's actually quite difficult to find two trees the same. There's an incredible diversity of plant and animal species, which is why the rainforest is so special. In fact, scientists have calculated we know more about the surface of the moon than we do the species of the rainforest. In the next layer up, the under canopy, the competition becomes even more intense. Delicate palms compete with thick, heavy vines for space. And some plants start life by growing on top of others. These are epiphytes, or air plants, which start life in the boughs of trees. To begin with, they don't need roots because they take in water and nutrients straight off their hosts. As they get bigger, they frequently extend roots to the ground to supplement their nutrient intake. As if having to share their supplies with an epiphyte wasn't bad enough, some trees may find themselves in the clutches of a killer. This is a matapalo, or strangler fig. As it grows, it slowly wraps itself around its host tree, gradually cutting the trunk off from light and water. In the middle of all this is a laurel tree, which has all but disappeared in the clutches of the fig tree that's growing on it. It won't be long before the fig surrounds the laurel completely and kills it. Eventually, only the fig will remain. Several tree types have developed ways of defending themselves against the attention of epiphytes. This one has a very smooth bark, which makes it very difficult for epiphytes to get a grip. 
Those species that survive this long may achieve the ultimate prize. They reach the canopy, the top layer. Some, known as emergence, even shoot out above the canopy, but all can now benefit from direct access to the sunlight and rain they need to survive. I'm on a special aerial tramway which gives me a really unique view of the canopy. 80% of life in the rainforest is found out here. The trees are dripping with epiphytes and rotting vegetation. Compared to the forest floor, it's really very bright. It's these conditions that allow such a diversity of life to flourish. That's high up on many travellers' to-do lists. But this is not the only tropical rainforest with natural beauty to behold. South America, Africa and India also have an abundance of wildlife and wonder. But what is it that makes this biome home to so many species of plants and wildlife? Tropical rainforests form a broad, discontinuous belt around the world, centred at the equator and extending from the Tropic of Cancer in the north to the Tropic of Capricorn in the south. The climate in this biome is humid and there's no winter or summer. Instead, it's hot and wet all year, providing the perfect climate for plants to flourish. Much like deciduous forests, tropical rainforests are made up of a number of layers. The ground layer is very dark and due to the heat is very steamy, with only 2% of light penetrating through. It has a lot of dead and quickly decaying plant matter, such as leaves that rot away. The rapid decomposition releases nutrients that are quickly absorbed by the plants and trees, leaving the soils relatively infertile. The shrub layer is between 0 and 10 metres. It's made up of smaller plants, including orchids. It grows thickly near openings in the forests, rivers and small clearings. Depending on the particular forest, you can find alligators, jaguars, snakes and insects, such as ants and tarantulas, living here. The under canopy tends to be between 10 and 20 metres. It's made up of young trees that are growing quickly as they compete to reach the sunlight. In the South American rainforest, you'll find insects, sloths and howler monkeys here. Coming next is the main canopy at 20 to 30 metres. It's home to birds and acts a bit like an umbrella, shading the layers below the trees. These are tall and straight with few branches. These creepers, which look like the type Tarzan would swing from, are called lianas. They are rooted to the ground and have leaves and flowers up in the canopy. These plants are called epiphytes. They grow on the trunk and branches of the trees and survive by obtaining their nutrients direct from the air or the rainwater. At around 30 to 40 metres, the emergent layer is made up of one or two of the tallest trees in the rainforest. Down near the ground, they have wide buttress roots, providing a stable support for the trees. This canopy layer and the emergent trees are humming with birds, insects and butterflies. Trees and wildlife have learned to flourish in this environment, making the rainforest biome the most biodiverse in the world. Hopefully those videos gave you a quick overview of what we are talking about this week and how we're looking at the layers of the rainforest, how they're structured, how they're very different and how we can explain this to someone who knows nothing of the rainforest. Now we need to get started with our introduction, so let's have a think about what we would need to include. If we were introducing an explanation report about the layers of the rainforest, I want you to think about what the introduction should do for the reader. You might want to pause the video at this moment and just think, what do we do when we start any piece of writing? What's the purpose of our introduction? Well, hopefully you came up with the same ideas that I did, First of all, you've got to introduce why you are writing and what you are writing about. You need to orientate your reader so they have an understanding of what they're going to be reading about in the rest of your piece of work. And you need to give the reader a really clear understanding of what the rest of the report will be about. And that's your key theme here. So let's have a look at the introduction and what we're going to include. Now, because you've already watched a couple of videos um, and you've got a bit of an understanding of the rainforest and the layers that are there, I think first of all we need to think about the magnificence of the rainforest and this video clip does it really well. If we're introducing a, a piece of text about the rainforest as a whole, I think we need some more generalistic 
statements. We need some more information about how long the rainforest has existed for, where it exists perhaps, what it's like there. So we give our reader a sense of what they're going to be reading next. So we're going to watch this video. Now you do need to get out a notepad and a pen, a pencil, so that you can take notes while you're watching, so that we've got some ideas for our introduction. You might want to pause the video now to get those things ready. The heart of the rainforest. Here we can discover the secrets of a world 100 million years old. The forest has survived from prehistoric times, outlasting the dinosaurs. Huge trees stand like monuments amidst the symphony of life. Shrouded in a translucent veil, millions of living organisms compete for light beneath the canopy. Layer upon layer, life here exists in harmony. Trees in the rainforest that have been known to live as long as 350 years and grow to nearly 200 feet tall. Throughout the forest, trees seek sunlight. Its energy allows them to process the nutrients they need to survive. A soft carpet of moss covers these ancient arctic beech trees as they reach ever skyward in search of the light. Now I don't know about you but his voice was very haunting and certainly hooked me in with some of those statements he made. I wonder whether you had some of these things down. You might want to pause the video as I go through these to see if you've got similar things. The heart of the rainforest he describes it as he talks about the secrets of a world that's a hundred million years old and something that has existed from prehistoric times outlasting the dinosaurs. He talked about how rainforests have huge trees standing in them, like monuments, a simile there, amidst the symphony of life, some really lovely language choices, poetic, you could almost say. He talks about how the whole forest is shrouded in a translucent veil, to be shrouded means to be covered up, and a translucent veil, he's talking about the, the mist in the rainforest and how the, the raindrops that are suspended in the air create this veil, something that almost covers something, but you can just see through it. Translucent is when you can partially see through. And we've got millions of living organisms competing for light beneath the canopy. He said how this was layer upon layer of life existing here in harmony, how the trees in the rainforest have been known to live as long as 350 years old and grow to nearly 200 feet tall. And he also mentioned how the whole forest, throughout the whole forest, sorry, the trees and the plants seek sunlight as their energy source as it allows them to process the nutrients required to survive. Just had a spelling I needed to check over there. Okay, hopefully you've made as many notes as I did and you've got the gist of what he was saying in the introduction we've now got some ideas for what we might do to construct our own. Now our sentence level work today revisits our work on expanded lists from a couple of weeks ago when you had a spag lesson on this. I've done a couple of examples to remind you what must happen when we're using colons to introduce a simple list within our writing and then I'll show you how we can expand these as well. So let's have a little look at that first. So we've got some yes, right or no answers here. I want you to decide whether and which of these statements are true, which of these sentences are correctly written, which ones use the colon accurately. You might want to pause the video as I go through each one and think about which one you think is correct or not. The rainforest can be thought of as several distinct layers. The forest floor, the understory, the canopy and the emergent layer. I need you to decide is that correct or is it not correct? 
Well, let's have a think about it. The rainforest can be thought, let's correct the spelling, can be thought of as several distinct layers. Does this bit make sense on its own? Yes, it does. Therefore, the colon has gone after it. And then we've got a simple list afterwards. I'm going with a tick. This one is correct. Hope you did too. Let's have a look at the next one. In the rainforest, there is hmm, the forest floor, the understory, the canopy and the emergent layer. Well, that is true in the rainforest. Probably should say there are rather than there is. Grammatically, there's more than one there. In the rainforest, there are. But would we have a colon here? This bit doesn't make sense on its own. So I'm going with a no. This one is not correct. I hope you could spot that as well. Let's have a look at C. The rainforest is a fascinating ecosystem which consists of the forest floor, the understory, the canopy and the emergent layer. OK, the rainforest is a fascinating ecosystem which consists of... Does that make sense on its own? No, it doesn't. That one is not correct. And the last one then. The rainforest consists of several sections which ca which can be thought of, that I should say, can be thought of as separate layers. The forest floor, the understory, the canopy and the emergent layer. Yes, I think that one is true because you've got an independent clause before the colon is put in place. So that's our reminder. The clause before the colon must make sense on its own. OK, now we've checked that. I want you to have a think. What would need to change in this sentence here then? What's wrong with it? Within the rainforest is a fascinating biosystem which consists of the forest floor, the understory, the canopy and the emergent layer. Now we either don't use a colon here and then that sentence works perfectly well. We would need a comma up here because you've got a relative clause. So the comma goes before that. We do need an E in the word understory because we're talking about layers. And if you think about stories in a house or stories in a car park, we spell it EY, but it is misspelt or spelt differently across different texts and so on. Within the rainforest is a fascinating biosystem, which consists of the forest floor, the understory, the canopy and the emergent layer. Now that does now work without the colon, but if I wanted it to work with a colon, I would need to make this clause make sense. Within the rainforest is a fascinating biosystem, which consists of several interesting layers. Now that is independent. Now I can put my colon and that now makes sense on its own. Just make it a bit smaller so you can see it. OK, so that is now an independent clause. You could try and use a colon today then to use an expanded list or you might want to use semicolons to separate clauses within a list. So let's have a little look and see how you might do this. So instead of writing a simple list, you could introduce an expanded list and I've done one here. Within the rainforest is a fascinating biosystem, colon, the forest floor, which is extremely dark, the understory, which is where all the shrubs live, the canopy, where 80% of the wildlife lives, and the emergent layer, which is the tallest layer, where the trees reach over 200 feet in height. So you might want to pause the video and have a little go of your own here. Within the rainforest, what are you going to say? Can you expand a simple list like I gave you an example of a minute ago and see if you can have a go? And then you can include that in your introduction today. OK, so now we've had a look at our sentence level work. I would like you to think about the features of this sort of writing. Like our lost thing work a couple of weeks ago now, you wrote an explanation report with description. And that is sort of what you're doing today. The only difference is you are going to be doing it in some sort of order because actually we're going to start at the forest floor and work our way up. But the whole text needs to be very formal in its writing style. We're not going to be having any contractions going to be using standard English. You're going to be including loads of facts about the rainforest, so lots of technical vocabulary going to be included in this. You might have heard some words in the right, in the um, videos just now, epiphytes, nutrients, layers, ecosystems, species, diversity, flourish, thrive, teeming with life. All of this is technical language. I am just going to highlight this spelling here because it is always a real problem in year six and I think a lot of children think it ends up ends with a C E nutrients rather than nutrients because you can't hear the T at the end of it. We're going to be using report fact file style of writing. You're going to be writing in the third person and you're going to keep this writing interesting and detailed. Otherwise you're going to bore your reader. I've got a modelled right here to show you the sort of thing you might include. 
including some of those awe and wonder facts perhaps that you had in that video that you just watched um, and introducing the overall theme. Have a look at the punctuation I've used in this one and we'll have a look at a couple more in a moment. Amazingly, rainforests have existed for hundreds of millions of years and continue to thrive today. They have been around since long before the dinosaurs. Located along the equator, rainforests currently cover over 2.5 million square miles all around the globe. Each one contains a huge diversity of plant and animal species. Within the tropical rainforest, there are many fascinating ecosystems. Therefore, it may be easier to think about them as a series of layers, each one being distinctly different from the next. So that example has got a couple of mistakes in, which I'm just going to correct for you while I'm reading it through with you. Hopefully you spotted my use of brackets then. We've got some hyphenated words here, like ecosystems. You've got a semicolon here to, in, to link two independent clauses together. Located along the equator, rainforests currently cover over 2.5 square million miles all around the globe. Semicolon, each one contains a huge diversity of plant and animal species. Missing word there, plant, huge diversity of. Okay, so you've got two independent clauses there linked with a semicolon. Might be something you want to try today. And another example down the bottom here. Within the tropical rainforest, there are many fascinating ecosystems. Therefore, it may be easier to think about them as a series of layers, semicolon, each one being distinctively different from the next. So lots of punctuation being used in today's writing. I'd like you to be thinking about what punctuation are you showing off every time you do your writing. I've got a second example here, which includes a simple list using a colon, as I talked about in the introduction. Within the rainforest, life exists in harmony as several different ecosystems which work together, therefore contributing to the health of this exciting natural environment. Because of its complex nature, this fascinating biosystem can be more easily thought of, sorry, thought about as four separate layers, the forest floor, the understory, the canopy and emergent layers. Interestingly, these layers work together, each one dependent on the next. So you can see in this writing, I've included a list, I've got a variety of sentence openers within because interestingly it's just a brief overview but there's lots of technical language already in use here that helps your reader understand that this um, writing has lots of different words that we might not be using normally so that's the technical language then so we've got ecosystems we've got words like environment look at the spelling because these are year five six spellings We've got biosystems. Oops, I'm not sure what's going on with my pen there. Um, we've got all of this technical language here as well. Understory, canopy, emergent layer, and the forest floor. All of that is uh, technical language that I've included in this introduction. So it's your turn now to have a go at today's task. You're going to be writing your own introduction to your rainforest explanation report. Good luck, and I look forward to reading them.